couple hours and just at the grocery store and um, this man said hey you gonna have another go around on Sunday and you know he recognized that I'd raced here before and he said I remember when you had to walk in the run and you mentioned your dog and I couldn't believe he remembered that and what he was alluding to was the fact that in my last Ironman here I had uh, a chronic Achilles injury and I knew that full well coming in and I chose to race and so I chose to race injured so I also chose that I would maybe uh, have to walk a bit and as it turned out I had to walk a, a good portion of the marathon maybe around 20k and uh, I said after the fact that there wasn't such a bad thing walking half the marathon the only bad thing was I didn't have my dog with me so she didn't get to enjoy a nice walk with her mom <laughs> they were all pretty special wins they really uh, each one mirrored in some way my, my own personal life to be honest like I, I mean when you think that I've raced here from 2002 to 2007 and those were some pretty key times in my life my own life and you know I can't remember coming here over Easter and being homesick and you know crying basically the whole flight thinking I shouldn't be here I should be with my family and then I get here and it is my family and, and I mean I loved every victory for sure <laughs> there's no question there were some that shouldn't have happened where my nutrition was completely fouled up and so that was special the fact that you know on that day I probably should have stopped and I thought you know this is where you have to prove that you're a true champion by championing any situation and finding a way to win no matter what. So I remember that year and I remember winning in that year and, and that was pretty special. Uh, 2006 was really special, it was the fifth time that I'd won here. Uh, I was part of a big team called Tried to Buy so there was a little bit more pressure, not from them but hey I'm on this big team, you know I better win. <laughs> and uh, you know so that uh, was part of it, you know part of the history as well. Um, you know, I, I, I had times, you know, in my, my personal life which were really a challenge and I came here and I was happy. And I found, you know, I found, okay, this is where I'm really loved and this is what I love to do. And went back to Canada, you know, armed with uh, the ability to deal with life's curveballs that were happening in my own personal life. So Australia has been part of my life, not just part of my career. You, you, don't, you don't realize when you're an athlete, all these great places that you go to, they're, they're work. I come to Australia to work. I came here to race fast. I went to New Zealand to work and race fast, Thailand, etc. And when you step away from it, you really realize that those are places I probably would never have gone. And I probably would never have had a reason to come to Australia if I wasn't an athlete. I, uh, I love Belinda Granger, and, and she's one of the great people in our sport. And I'm gonna miss her, she's not gonna be here this weekend. Uh, I, I don't think I ever once thought I have to beat Belinda Granger. I really don't. I, I really took a different approach when I raced. I, I, didn't, I rarely looked at start lists. I raced with my heart and I, I really kept it as internal as I possibly could. I knew what I had to do. I knew, knew I needed to swim as fast as I could and to, to bike as hard as I could to reduce any deficits to anybody, including Belinda, but just to anybody. And then I would have to run as hard as I could because I wanted to do the best that I could, whether that was a win or whether that was breaking three hours for the marathon or breaking nine hours for the Ironman just wanted to, to be fast and do well. Belinda came into it after the fact when we started talking about it and realizing that she was the Aussie that wanted to win this darn race. And I was the Canadian that kept winning. So yeah, I mean, when she finally beat me at Ironman Canada, it was funny, so many people were so upset that, that were in my camp. They were so upset and they were like, oh my God, I can't believe it. And I'm like, she had a great race. She executed it brilliantly. She deserved to win. I did not deserve to win this race. And there wasn't one moment in that race where I could have gone faster. But, you know, Belinda's a great athlete. She has a huge heart and, and she was a great competitor. I remember one year, I mean, I didn't see it happen, but I passed her on the marathon 
and away I went. And my husband was on the course, and and she was running by him. She apparently stopped dead in her tracks, and she went, "Geez, she's done it again!" And that's right in the middle of the race. Like that gives you an idea of who Belinda Granger is. And she's a riot, and she's a dear person, and I love her to pieces. And, and Belinda and I have had similar careers. We're both over 40. We both love the sport. We raced long after we probably should have stopped racing, and. I mean, I, I know she's retired now from the sport, but I can't imagine that she's left it. I'm sure she's just like I am. You know, I swim, bike, and run. Not all three sports, but I do it every every day. Um, the hardest thing about flying here was that I had to sit in a, a seat for 24 hours and not swim, bike, and run. And, and that's what Belinda's like, too. Uh, she's still very active in the sport, and, and we're sort of that old generation that just love, love, love triathlon so much that we might not be crossing finish lines, we might not be crossing the first, but we're going to be involved some way, somehow, every single day. And, uh, and that's a gift too, and Belinda has it, and, uh, and I love that she has that. <laughs> yeah, Ironman Australia is, is family for me on so, on, on so many levels, yeah, family. So hold on the phone till they call, there's nothing to lose.